Hi, welcome to the White House Google Plus Hangout on Refinancing. I'm Spencer Raskoff, CEO of Zillow, the leading real estate marketplace. Across the country, there are encouraging signs in the housing market. Inventories are tight in some areas and values are rising, but that doesn't mean homeowners are back in the driver's seat or out of the woods yet, far from it. Home values are down around 25% from their peak and about one in three homeowners with a mortgage is underwater. And while homeowners underwater aren't necessarily in danger of foreclosure, in fact, Zillow's data shows that nine out of 10 of them are still paying their mortgages on time, they're still often saddled with higher than necessary interest payments and mortgage payments, which cause hardship on their families, and they're unable to take advantage of very low mortgage rates. That's where the government can help. Today, I'm excited to moderate a discussion with Secretary of Housing and Urban Development, Sean Donovan, and four homeowners who may be able to take advantage of current and proposed government refinancing programs. Let me turn it over to Secretary Donovan to say a few words. Spencer, thank you. It's great to be here on my very first uh, Google Plus Hangout. Uh, and for me, this is an exciting opportunity, not just to get the word out about the programs that we have put in place. Too often what we find is we can have the best programs in the world. We can be helping uh, have things available to help people. But if they don't know about it, if we're not getting the word out, uh, they, we might as well not have the programs. And that's really what today is an opportunity to do. It's also a terrific way for us to get feedback on what's working and what's not, to get real live feedback from the ground that says, hey, if you made this change or that, uh, and we can go back to the drawing board, look at our programs and try to make them work even better. The bottom line is we know there are millions of families that are paying their mortgages every month. Uh, and yet because of the decline in home prices, uh, ac across the country that happened uh, starting in 2000, uh, early, well before the president came into office, we know that this is something that we can do more on. And we're seeing real results. We've had a, a doubling of refinancing applications since we put out many of our refinancing programs last year. The president made this a centerpiece of his We Can't Wait uh, initiatives, but there is more that we can do, and I'm, I'm looking forward to talking about that today, and particularly talking about it using this new technology that's going to help us reach more people uh, and hear from more people what's working and what's not. Thanks. Thank you, Secretary Donovan. So 16 million households in the United States are underwater on their home loan. We have four homeowners today, each of whom have different stories. Let's introduce them briefly, and then we'll turn to questions. So first, from New Jersey, Leanne Rechtenwald. Hi, I'm a teacher from Brick, New Jersey. Thank you. And from Seattle, Pete Toski. Hi, I'm a vice president of a promotional merchandise agency. From New Jersey, Michelle Largma. Uh, Michelle, one more time. I think your audio is having a hard time. Just say, introduce yourself again, Michelle. Hi, I'm Michelle Largman. I'm um in New Jersey and an LMS coordinator. Thank you, Michelle. And Valerie Jerome from Georgia. Hi, I'm Valerie Jerome. I live in Waycross, Georgia, and I'm a self-employed optometrist. Great. Before we dive into our participants' questions, um, remember you can ask questions on Twitter with the hashtag PoundWHHangout. We'll start with a question from one of our participants, and then we'll take some questions from Facebook and Twitter. So first, Leanne, please tell us about your situation, and let's see if Secretary Donovan can help. Hi, Secretary Donovan. Um, my husband and I bought a condo back in 2005 at the peak of the market. Um, obviously, we're about realistically maybe $25,000 underwater, perhaps more than that. Um, and we're wondering, um, I've heard rumors and read about rumors of there being a potential HARP 3.0 program to address the needs of borrowers whose loans aren't backed uh, by a government entity, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, the VA, FHA. Um, is that a political reality in the near future for people who are in circumstances similar to all of the panelists here? Uh, well, two things I would say about your situation. First of all, as you said, you don't have a Fannie Mae or a Freddie Mac mortgage. Uh, we have made, with our own authority, not waiting for Congress, but with our own authority, big changes to what we call our HARP program. And for those who don't speak HUD uh, or speak federal government, our HARP program is the Home Affordable Refinance Program. And we, those changes, which we call HARP 2.0, went into effect starting late last year, and we've seen a doubling in refinancing applications around the country 
lots more people, about a doubling in the number of people who are getting HARP uh, refinances done. So we're encouraged by that. But just as you said, you know, most people don't even know whether they have a Fannie Mae or a Freddie Mac mortgage, much less feel like, hey, if I'm paying my mortgage, why shouldn't I have a chance to refinance whether I have a government insured mortgage or not? Uh, unfortunately, the co president can't open up refinancing to anybody who doesn't have a government insured mortgage without Congress acting. And that's why in his State of the Union address this year, he laid out a universal refinancing plan. One of the things he said is, hey, we've got millions of families who could save $2,500, $3,000 a year. That's not only good for you uh, in your situation, but it's also good for your neighborhood, uh, for the state of New Jersey, for the whole country, because that money that you're going to save is going to go back into the economy and cre create jobs. So this is something the president made a very high priority. You may have heard he put together a to-do list for Congress with five different high priority pieces of legislation. This was one of them. And uh, Senator Feinstein has a bill called the Expanding Refinancing Opportunities Act. Uh, it's in front of the Senate right now, and we're trying to make that happen. Um, it would open up refinancing to uh, homeowners in your situation where you don't have a government insured mortgage. Uh, I will tell you, something like this in the past had bipartisan support, and it would be something that uh, probably we could have gone, gotten done very quickly. Unfortunately, uh, as you've seen, we've got too many people in Congress that are playing politics uh, instead of figuring out how we can get the economy moving. And so it's going to be a real fight to get this bill done. And so what I would say to you and to everybody who's out there in your situation, write your congressperson, uh, tweet them. Uh, I don't know if you can reach them on Google+, Plus, but you might try. Uh, but we got to let folks in Congress know that they're real folks like you in your situation who, who need help. The only other thing I would say to you is that we did get a, a, a jump start on this through this big $25 billion mortgage servicing settlement that you may have heard about, uh, there is going to be some refinancing for homeowners in your kind of situation that's available. So the thing that you might do as well is reach out to the attorney general uh, in uh, your state. You could also call your lender directly and find out if they're part of the settlement. Um, there's also a we website, nationalmortgagesettlement.com. Uh, that has information about how you can find out whether you might be eligible uh, for refinancing under the settlement. But that, that isn't going to reach everybody in your situation. And as the president said in his State of the Union address, we need to make this universally available to folks who are doing the right thing, paying their mortgages, and, and could benefit from these low rates. And one other resource for you, Leanne, at Zillow, we've set up a web page in consultation with the secretary's office at zillow.com slash underwater, which has tools where you can try to use those tools to determine if your loan is actually backed by Freddie or Fannie or other resources available to help uh, help resolve your situation. Um, let's turn to a question from Facebook for a moment. Uh, Laura from Oregon asks, does the new HARP program, Secretary Donovan, allow for refinancing without an appraisal? Uh, it's a great question. This was one of those uh, nutty things, to use the technical term, that we saw happening for so many of these refinances. You have a situation where Fannie or Freddie, or FHA for that matter, FHA is part of my agency HUD, is already on the hook for a mortgage. Um, and whether it's 100% loan to value, 200% loan to value, doesn't matter for the purposes of refinancing that, that mortgage. And so what we did with our HARP 2.0 program was to eliminate the need for most mortgages to have uh, a, a full appraisal done. That can save up to $1,000 just that one step alone from refinancing. The problem is, and I'm not going to bore you with the details of mortgage securities laws, but there's a provision that uh, you do need to have to prove what the LTV, the loan to value is for uh, uh, some of these loans, we can use an automated appraisal that doesn't require a full appraisal, very cheap using data that's available to Fannie and Freddie. There is a small share of mortgages, about 15 or 20 percent, where that kind of automated appraisal doesn't work, and they still need to get a full appraisal. That's one of the things that would be fixed 
by another bill. I, t I mentioned Senator Feinstein's bill a moment ago. There's another bill uh, from Senators Menendez and Boxer called the Responsible Homeowner Refinancing Act that would eliminate the need entirely for appraisals from that last 15 to 20 percent of loans. And again, that's real money, uh, $1,000, up to $1,000 that's saved per transaction, where frankly, the appraisal uh, doesn't serve any real purpose. Uh, that's something that uh, we think is important to get done. And that's why we put it in the bill that's in front of Congress right now. Okay, let's turn to one of our participants here, Pete from Seattle. Please share your situation with the Secretary. Hi, Secretary Donovan. Thank you for joining us today. My pleasure. I live in a, I live in a playing community uh, built around a golf course with about 1,500 homes, built in the late 70s, 80s, and 90s, but with new construction even today. Um, it's a, I have a unique piece of property in that it's uh, the lot size is twice as big as anybody else's. It's in a pr very private setting, unlike any other home. Uh, it's the only piece of property like this in the entire community. And I have a completely remodeled house with high-end finishes. I had an appraisal done in order to try to do some refinancing. And for the appraisal, they didn't consider any of these factors. They pulled comps and the comps they pulled, most of them were short sales or foreclosures. So therefore the value that they're looking at comparable is not anywhere equal to what my house is actually would sell for. Um, they said that there were reason they couldn't do anything different is that there were restrictions around how the appraisals are done now. And so they couldn't consider the features that make my house unique uh, to give it the value that it really would have if I were to try to sell it. So let me just ask you, what kind, do you know what kind of mortgage you have, whether it's a, a government insured mortgage or not? It's not a government insured mortgage, but it's with one of the banks that did receive uh, bailout money or funds, you know, uh, back in 2008, 2009. Well, so if, if you had a Fannie Mae or a Freddie Mac mortgage, this problem would be taken care of. As we just talked about, you wouldn't need uh, an appraisal or frankly, you could get uh, a, a refinance independent of what loan to value uh, you're at. That's not true today because uh, we don't have this authority. So one thing I would say is go back to uh, needing to talk to your members of Congress, really reach out and make the point, hey, we need to pass uh, the, this bill that Senator Feinstein has put forward, the Expanding Refinancing Opportunities Act, and that would open up refinancing even for underwater borrowers like you, uh, e even if you don't have a Fannie Mae or Freddie Mac mortgage. The other thing I would mention is it is worth reaching out to see if you might be eligible for refinancing under this mortgage servicing settlement uh, that we reached. Again, that's not going to reach everyone. Um, there are five banks that were part of it. Uh, J.P. Morgan, Chase, Wells, Bank of America, Ally, and Citibank. Uh, we're now negotiating with other banks to see if other ones might come into it. Uh, but at least if it's within those, those five, you might have an opportunity uh, to, to refinance. The other thing, I, I was reading a little bit about your story. Uh, my understanding is that you also have a second mortgage. Is that right? That's correct. When I originally set it up, it was done at the same time. So it wasn't taken after the purchase. It was taken at the purchase. Yeah. And the this bank is with the second mortgage doesn't even do loans anymore, so they won't even discuss it. Yeah, and, and this is a problem that we often see as well. When we heard complaints about uh, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac homeowners trying to refinance, uh, oftentimes that second lien was a barrier to refinancing. And so one of the things that we did, we got agreements from all the major banks to uh, automatically resubordinate their mortgage. What that means is, that they weren't going to stand in the way of first mortgages uh, refinancing. So that's something that is no longer standing in the way of Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac borrowers refinancing. If we can get, get this bill done, Senator Feinstein's bill done, uh, we would be able uh, to, to help refinance for folks in your situation, even if you have a second mortgage. OK, great. Thank you. OK, our, our next question comes from Twitter. Um, at Funster Monster, uh, who tweets that he's a single dad, he's missed one payment on his mortgage, he's working multiple jobs to pay bills. How can he find out about refi resources? This is a very common refrain, just where can I get more information? Uh, it is a terrific question. Uh, this is something that is so important. It's, it's the reason why I'm doing this today is to get the word out about, about what we're doing. 
one of the easiest things for a homeowner to do, no matter what situation you're in, is call what, uh, something called the HOPE hotline at 888-995-HOPE. Uh, talk to somebody there to, to figure out what your options are. You can also uh, go to the HUD website and find out information for a housing counselor near you. One of the things that's so important to be careful of here, we have through HUD free assistance available through housing counselors in every community across the country. Too often what we see is scam artists, folks who frankly victimize people once with bad mortgages. They may not be making mortgages any anymore, but they're now uh, trying to scam people again by charging the money up front to quote unquote help them with their mortgages. Uh, be careful about these scams. If anybody asks you to pay money up front, don't do it. Uh, go call the Hope Hotline, go to HUD's website. You can, there's free assistance available. You never have to pay up front to get help with your mortgage. And that's something that I really want to make sure we get the message out uh, today and keep getting that message out. And, and the phrase that companies use, they call themselves loan mod companies. If we're talking about a loan modification, I think what you're saying, sec Mr. Secretary, is you shouldn't have to pay up front to a loan mod company to help you modify a loan. That's right, but we've also heard uh, uh, other lawyers and others, not just these loan mod companies uh, doing the same thing. And, right. and independent of what situation you're in, you've missed a payment or not, uh, be careful. There is free help available to you. Uh, make sure you get it in the right place. Okay, uh, Michelle Artman, uh, a homeowner who joins us on the Hangout from New Jersey. Please share your story. Hi, and thank you, um, and uh, hi, Secretary Donovan. My quick story is about seven years ago, I sought the American dream. I was engaged to a guy, looked for a home, had to pick a fence, dog, 2.5 kids. In mid-2006, I got the house, I got the dog, I never got married, and I don't have kids. I put a third down on the home, and now I have a large home in a development with many in pre-foreclosure. I can't sell because the house is worth half of what I paid. The mortgage is more than the value. My taxes are 12000 a year. I've got great credit, always paid on time, and been financially responsible. I refinanced through Wells Fargo, who sold my loan to Freddie Mac and is now still serviced by Wells Fargo, who was bailed out by the government. Here I am, I can't sell, I can't refinance, and I'm thinking of strategically defaulting. Why is it that I need to ruin my perfect credit um, in order to have a bank consider to let me take advantage of a two point lower rate than what I have and if I can't refi, why are others going in foreclosure getting forgiven? Well, the short answer is you should be able to refi. Uh, that's exactly what the president is trying to do is make refinancing available to everybody who's current on their mortgage. Uh, remind, let, me, let me understand a little bit more about your situation. You said you already did refinance with Wells Fargo once. Is that, is that what I heard you say? Yes, I've refinanced with Wells Fargo, and it was about a year and a half ago, um, right before they said the cutoff was, and then Wells Fargo sold it to Freddie Mac without me knowing. Well, if you have a Freddie Mac mortgage, you still should be able to refinance. There is a cutoff date, but it sounds like you're before that cutoff date. Uh, have you tried reaching out back to Wells Fargo recently to see uh, if they will make uh, another refinancing available? Wells Fargo will not refinance, and all the other mortgage companies I've called say the same thing. They all say that um, the, the loan is owned by Freddie Mac, the house is underwater, and I'm not one of the um, foreclosure situations. Well, it sounds like you're talking to somebody who may not know what they're talking about at, <laughs> at these uh, mortgage companies. And let's be honest, uh, that's been known to happen before. Uh, it wouldn't be the first time. And so this is a situation where uh, you might want to reach out, as we talked about before, to talk to a housing counselor uh, who is on your side and could give you clear-cut, straight advice about whether you're eligible or not. There may be something I don't know uh, that we, I haven't heard uh, about your mortgage that may be an issue. Uh, and that's the kind of thing that it sounds like you might want to get help from somebody who could really spend the time with you to look through it and understand why it is. Because from everything I'm hearing, 
Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac mortgages should be eligible uh, in the date that you're talking about with the kind of rate reduction that you would get independent of what your loan to value is. You should be able to refinance under HARP. Uh, and so I would suggest you reach out to a counselor and get direct assistance to really work through this problem with you. We'd be happy to help you get connected to a counselor in your area. Do you happen to know what that cutoff date is to refi? Uh, it would depend on uh, exactly what your mortgage is. So I, I can't give you an exact date here, but if we can follow up with you to get information about your mortgage, you could go to one of the websites uh, that we've talked about, uh, enter data and figure out what, uh, what the cutoff is for your mortgage. So that's, there, there are websites that are available that can help, but again, a counselor could help you as well with that. Thank you. Of course. The next question comes from Facebook from a veteran. We are a military family and we're recently stationed overseas. We are currently renting the home we own in the States, but can't refi. Is there help for military families who are now also landlords? Uh, this is a, a very important question, and I, I will tell you, uh, having been a major part of bringing enforcement actions and reaching this $25 billion settlement that we did with these big banks, I heard a lot of terrible stories. Some of the most heartbreaking stories were from veterans who, even though they'd been asked by their country, like the person we're talking about here who just uh, sent in the question, asked to serve their country going overseas, renting out their home because they didn't want to sell their home uh, back in their community that they were going to come back to, and yet because of that, cut out of benefits. And, and this is often the federal law requires that members of the military get options to refinance their mortgages. So this is something that has changed significantly because of this mortgage servicing settlement that we reached. We put in place requirements that families be able to get the refinancing that they're entitled to under law, and not only that, to get refunded any extra interest they may have paid from the time that they tried to refinance, and to be able to get modifications even if they're not living in the home at, uh, at the current time. This is a classic thing where banks have been saying no to modifications to mortgages for military families because they're not owner-occupied. Uh, and the, ser the servicing settlement changed that. The president himself announced these changes a few months ago. And so I would suggest to the uh, uh, family that has sent in the question that they need to go back to that servicer today if they haven't recently since the servicing settlement went into effect. And if they're not getting uh, a good answer, we've set up at the new Consum Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, which the president fought hard to create uh, under the Wall Street Reform Bill that he got passed. Um, the reason he fought for it so hard is to protect military families and other families, just like the one who's asking the question. Uh, the CFPB has set up a specific branch uh, led by Holly Petraeus for military families. And so there are resources. If you go to the CFPB website uh, where you could talk to somebody at the CFPB about uh, these problems if you don't get satisfaction from the lender uh, uh, by contacting them. So one more question from Twitter, and then we'll turn to our, our last homeowner here. Um, this comes from Wall Street Journal reporter uh, Nick Timorowski via Twitter. He writes, uh, Wells Fargo is exiting the broker channel, they announced today. How concerned are you that federal regulation is further accelerating consolidation in the industry, which may make it more expensive to refi? So if there are fewer loan servicers um, giving, giving mortgages, uh, might that make it more expensive for people to refi? Look, there's no question that we have real uh, concerns about the number of banks out there making mortgages. Uh, if that number becomes too small, then we're going to have less competition. It'll be more expensive for consumers. So there's a lot of work that we're doing to make sure not just that a big player like Wells Fargo uh, is making loans, but that 
uh, small and medium-sized banks as well, and other financial institutions will continue to make loans. Specifically about refinancing, this is one of the big problems right now. Even if you have a Fannie Mae or a Freddie Mac mortgage, because of the current rules set out by Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, it is harder for a lender who doesn't currently service your mortgage, who doesn't currently have your mortgage, to be able to refinance. They're at an unfair disadvantage. And what that means is that there isn't enough competition right now for these mortgages. So one of the things that Senator Menendez and Senator Boxer's bill would do is to create more competition, to break down some of those last barriers to competition between lenders and make it not only easier to find a, a lender that would help you refinance, but also create comp more competition and lower the fees for refinancing. So that is something that is very important to us. And it's just another reason why we need all of your support uh, in Congress right now to get the president's refinancing plan passed as quickly as possible. OK, let's turn to Valerie, our homeowner from Georgia. Please share your story. Hi, thank you for having me on your program. Um, my situation is in 2009, I fell in love with a man from England and moved there. Um, my house in St. Petersburg, Florida, I decided to rent. Uh, I lived in England for about three years and I've recently moved back, relocated to Georgia to be closer to my family. Um, I've never missed a mortgage payment. However, my rent doesn't cover everything. I'm left in the hole about $400 a month, you know, that comes out of, you know, my pocket. Um, when I contacted my bank, they said because I didn't live in the house, I wouldn't be able to have any of these refinance and refinancing options that I've heard about on TV and, you know, Facebook and the newspapers. Um, so my question is, I mean, I don't want to do a, for, a short sale. I don't want to do a foreclosure. Why would I want to ruin my credit? I'm doing the responsible thing. Are there any um, programs available to homeowners like myself who, I guess, like the, like the veteran that's living overseas, have had to uh, rent their house. Um, are there any programs to help me refinance? I'm currently about 7% on my interest rate. Lowering the interest rate would um, save me some money and at least get me close to breaking even each month with my rent until the housing market recovers in Florida, which I don't think you have to plan anytime soon. Well, uh, part of the good news is that uh, you said you don't see the housing market in, in Florida recovering anytime soon. We are seeing prices starting to rise across the country, but particularly in hardest hit places like Florida. And, and one of the things that is making a big difference, as you know, Florida is one of the states that has the most families underwater because the, uh, the housing crisis there was, was worse than just about anywhere. Uh, the, and that's the reason why we're seeing such a big increase in refinancing in Florida from the president's uh, proposals that we've already put in place. We've seen a doubling of refinancing applications. I, I'm sorry, a 200% increase in refinancing applications in Florida. We've seen a, a doubling in the other states that we've talked about, in Washington, uh, in, in New Jersey, but particularly in Florida, a big increase. Uh, what I would say for your situation, some families, and I know you said you, you, don't, uh, you don't want to go this direction, for some families, the right answer is to do a short sale. And for those who don't know that might be in your situation, a short sale means that you'd be able to sell the home. And even if the sale price of the home is less than the amount of the mortgage, so you're underwater, you owe more on the mortgage than the, than the house is worth, you could still sell the home and be released completely from the mortgage and not have to owe whatever is le would be left on the mortgage. That's something that actually, for many families, is a good answer. And it's something we've been encouraging. And in fact, we've, been see we've seen short sales double uh, roughly over the last uh, year or so. And that's something we want to continue to encourage. In your case, though, where you want to hold on to the home, uh, because it's not owner occupied, there are fewer options available to you. For example, the HARP program um, is only available to owner occupied houses. It's not for investor owned or rental houses. However, the servicing settlement that we reached does have refinancing that's available for occupied homes. It doesn't have to be owner occupied. So as long as the home 
does have a renter in it, uh, you have income coming in, uh, that's something where you might be eligible, depending on who your lender is, uh, to be able to, to refinance. And so I would suggest you go to that nationalmortgagesettlement.com website um, to see if you might be eligible for refinancing uh, under, under the settlement. And just one comment on short sales. It used to take six to 12 or even longer, more months than that, almost 18 months to get short sales fully approved by the lender and the servicer and the buyer and the seller, the agent, et cetera. As short sales have become a bigger part of the market, they're a much more um, common transaction. And so banks will approve short sales now frequently within a couple of weeks. So it's a, it's a much more feasible alternative than it used to be. Um, yeah. We've also, you know, one, one more general point here. One of the things that we were very focused on in this servicing settlement that we reached was creating consistent, stronger standards for servicers on how long it takes them to respond to a homeowner, uh, how long it would take to process uh, a modification, a short sale. And so not only they are getting better, but we're also going to keep pushing them to get better as well. And then we now have real teeth, real consequences for them if they don't deliver uh, decent service. Frankly, we saw way too many families uh, that couldn't even get their call answered. Uh, if they did, they were passed from one person to another. Uh, and just to give you one example, because of the servicing settlement right now, every one of those lenders is required and has in place now what we call a single point of contact. So every homeowner that's going to contact their servicer that was part of the settlement, that servicer is required to have a single person that is always dealing with that one homeowner uh, to deal with their problems, whatever they might they might be. And we think that's that's just one important piece of what we should be doing in protecting consumers going forward, so that we make sure we don't have this kind of crisis happen to us again. That was a very important part of the settlement from my perspective. It's so frustrating to families uh, when they have multiple points of contact. Um, uh, next question comes from Facebook. Frank from New Jersey asks, is there anything in the HARP 2.0 program that allows for principal reduction of an underwater mortgage? I receive letters from companies all the time, but with so many scams out there, I don't know whom to trust. Uh, well, Frank, you're absolutely right not to trust so many of those letters that you get. Uh, again, and I'll, I'll keep repeating it, Call the HOPE hotline, 888-995-HOPE. Go to HUD's website. Find a housing counselor in your area if you want somebody that you can talk to that you can trust. Um, on HARP, he, here's one of the secrets about refinancing that a lot of people don't focus on. Interest rates are so low today. We have the lowest 30-year interest rates in the history of this country. Most families, not all, but most families, if they refinance, and choose, instead of just lowering their monthly payment and staying in, say, a 30-year fixed rate uh, loan, if they choose to shorten the amortization of their mortgage, say, to 10 or 20 years, most families can get back above water in just a couple years. And so it's a great way to rebuild equity. This is something we actually want to encourage more of this to happen, because we think negative equity is a big problem. We want to help to get us out of it as quickly as possible. Rising home prices, as we've started to see, can help that. But accelerating payments of principal through refinancing is also something important. A third bill that's part of the president's plan that I haven't talked about yet is Senator Merkley's Rebuilding Equity Act. And what it would do is cover closing costs, typically up to $3,000 per refinancing, it would cover those closing costs, eliminate them for homeowners that choose to take their savings and plow them back into reducing their equity by shortening the term of their mortgage. So that is a feature. You can already choose to do that under HARP. And in fact, the fees under HARP are already lower if you choose to do that. We want to go even further by covering the closing costs, but we need Congress to act to do that. The other thing I would say is outside of HARP, there are, are options for principal reduction that are available. This was one of the most important steps that happened in the servicing settlement is we're going to see tens of billions of dollars of principal reduction happening. It's already started uh, to happen. And at the same time, we've seen uh, private lenders, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac haven't made the decision to do this. We've seen other lenders, though, start to reduce principal uh, as well. Uh, particularly for borrowers that are struggling to make those, those payments. And so 
there are options, more and more options for principal reduction that are available. We want to see those increase going forward, both through the Rebuilding Equity Act and these other steps that we're taking. Unfortunately, we're out of time. Secretary Donovan, thank you so much for answering these questions. Thanks to the homeowners who have participated here and to the many people that participated on Facebook, Twitter, and Google+. Regardless of where you are in the political spectrum, it's incredibly important to help draw homeowners' attention to these important programs which exist to help homeowners who are in a difficult financial situation. You can find more resources information at zilla.com slash underwater. Thanks again, Secretary Donovan. I'll let you have the last word. Well, it's my pleasure, and I couldn't agree with you more that this is something that ought to go beyond politics. In the past, we had Republicans and Democrats supporting common sense measures like this, which would help. Look, and we've heard this today, every one of the homeowners that's with us uh, on this Google Plus Hangout, they're paying their mortgage. They're doing the right thing, uh, making sure they stay current. They're meeting their responsibilities the president believes we ought to give every homeowner that's doing the right thing, making their payments, the ability to refinance. And that's something that's been bipartisan in the past. I do think uh, there is bipartisan interest in this legislation that we're trying to get done, but it's not going to happen unless Americans that are in this situation reach out and let members of Congress know, hey, we need this help. It's good for us. It's good for our neighborhoods because it's going to lower the number of foreclosures out there. It's good for the economy overall because it generates more money that recirculates in our economy and creates jobs. We all benefit from it. There's no cost to the government uh, of any of these bills. In fact, the government's going to benefit because it's going to make Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac loans safer, FHA loans safer. This is something we ought to be able to get done and get done quickly to get our housing market moving. Uh, I also know that many of you have question, more questions out there. Uh, we're going to get those questions. We're going to try to get back to every one of you uh, with your question. Uh, we now have them uh, in through the various social media uh, uh, avenues that you're, you're reaching us. Uh, we're going to follow up on those questions and get back to you. So thank you all for your, your patience in joining us today. Uh, we were going to do more of this. Keep making sure that we're hearing your thoughts and questions. Keep working to make sure that common sense alternatives are available to American homeowners out there who have suffered from this crisis that we're working hard to repair. Thank you.